Our sponsor for today's video, Amber, offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check of your electric car. And this video is also brought to you by Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to another Rustic Ring EV towing challenge. Today we are running the Tesla Model X in our, I would say, pretty aggressive towing challenge. We are going to put 5,000 pounds on the back of this car, which is its maximum tow rating, and run a roughly 85 mile loop from here in Fort Collins, Colorado up into the mountains over some of the most extreme mountain passes we can find in the entire state of Colorado and then back here to Fort Collins. It's a hardcore test of thermals, stability, steering, a whole bunch of other things, of course, motor power, and we are running the Tesla Model X Plaid in this test. You may look at this one and say it's not a Plaid, but that's true. Um, we lost the intro, so we borrowed our friend's identical red Model X, not a Plaid in this case, to film the intro for you. So let's get into the whole video, the Rustic Ring Model X Towing Challenge. Really excited for this one. So here's what's upcoming in this video. We're gonna take a Tesla Model X Plaid. It's a 2023 car. So it's the tri-motor, roughly 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, just over thousand horsepower uh, vehicle. And we are gonna put essentially my trailer on the back with our smart car. That is the standard 5,000 pound load in this test. We also have a 10,000 pound load for more of the trucks like this one right here that can tow 10,000 plus pounds. That's when we put the Rivian on the trailer. So same trailer, just with the smart car, the electric smart car on this one and the Tesla Model X. Couple things to note about the Tesla Model X and towing is it has this very unique hitch situation that slides underneath the vehicle and interfaces with this unique coupling system. It's a little bit tricky to get it in there or not. Jordan, did, did we lose the clips for that as well, hooking up the hitch? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, Jordan doesn't remember. But either way, there's plenty of videos out there on how the hitch interfaces with the Model X. We shot it. I hope it made it into the video. Not the end of the world if it didn't. It's it's not rocket science or anything. But then you're left with like a two inch receiver and you can put your normal trailer hitch in there. Uh, the Model X again has a 5,000 pound maximum towing limit, which feels about right. The Rivian R1S pictured over there can do 7,500 pounds. And then the Mercedes EQS SUV is like 3,700 pounds. So it's right in the middle of its class. And I know truly a lot of people who tow with their Model Xs. I actually towed with this car all the way, I think the video hasn't gone up yet, but all the way from here in Fort Collins, not this one, I towed with my dad's X, not uh, Thomas's X, but I towed um, my trailer with a vehicle on the way back, but from here to Texas, so over a thousand miles with a trailer in the Model X and I had no issues with thermal performance, no issues with driving. It was just the stability was a little bit weird with the X. Uh, you know, this car felt maxed out when I put 5,000 pounds on it. We'll see how it does in the rustic ring test just to show you. Got to unlock it and then... Uh... Okay, go. just to show you in here some statistics. We have a maximum payload of 937 pounds, which is not very much. We, of course, will have the tires aired up properly, and we are running on the smaller wheels. It's important that you get a Model X with the base wheel if you want to tow, because if you get the 22s, you're then limited to 3,500 pounds towing. So if you want 5,000 pounds towing, you have to get the small wheels. Um, there's really not much else to say other than we'll get into the main video pickup where we didn't lose footage. I'm really sorry about the quirky intro to this one, but it's the Tesla Model X against, I think, the toughest towing challenge for an electric car. We have low speed, high 
mountain grades, both regen and accelerator uh, and acceleration, which is really going to uh, put a lot of heat into the system. We shot this a couple months ago, and I honestly don't even remember how the Model X did. So it'll be as much of a surprise to me as you guys as we watch this video. But let's put the Tesla Model X Plaid to the test in the rustic ring. For those of you wondering, should we also run the dual motor? it would be almost identical in terms of performance. If you really want to see it, perhaps we'll hook it up to this one as well. Let me know in the comments, but I think the results, almost identical battery capacity. We're never going full throttle with the Plaid that we need to. Uh, it should be about the same. So enjoy the video. Well, guys, we are charged up to 100% in the Model X. And just to show you, this is a Plaid with 7,000 miles on it, 7531. I'm just going to go here into service mode because this is one of the few vehicles that does actually give us battery temperature. And if I come here to high voltage system, nope, high voltage charging, you can see we're in the 38 to 42 degrees Celsius range, which is toasty. So that is not giving this thing a chance to breathe, but Tesla's thermal management system is just amazing. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna back it out of this place first. We're gonna run climate off until we're ready to hit the loop. And uh, I just gotta back it down the driveway a little bit. So once we're backed down, then, we will be good to go in terms of heading out on the rustic ring. Now I have towed with the Model X, I just wanna mention for thousands of miles. I drove down to Texas from here with this exact trailer. I then drove through Texas with this trailer and this Model X and I actually had to leave this trailer on the side of the road with my RAV4 EV that I was towing because the infrastructure and the efficiency of the Model X while towing was just so bad. There was also crazy wind. And um, one of the things we've noted through our tow testing is big vehicles like the F-150 Lightning right there um, are actually fairly inefficient without a trailer. But when you put a load on the back, they actually push more air out of the way, which means that aero, uh, you, the aero of your load is less affected. And I have to say that the Model X is so slippery that the trailer really affects the range more than you think. It also only has a roughly 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, which driving normally gives you plenty of range in this thing. We've done range tests and almost 300 miles it does on a charge, that's fine. Uh, but those trucks all have about 130 kilowatt hours of storage, and some of them even have over 200 kilowatt hours of storage. So a lot of people tow with Model X. I think it requires a lot of patience. The charge curve isn't amazing, which I mean is that it charges is very fast down low to about 35, 36%, up 250 kilowatts, which isn't the end of the world. And then uh, up top though, it really starts to slow down. It doesn't sit flat all the way. It's not a bad charge curve. It's totally livable. It's much better than Model Y or Model 3 or something like that. But um, certainly I'm looking forward to running a Model Y in this test. That could be kind of interesting. I don't know how much Model Y can tow though. We might have to come up with a lighter load if it can't do 5,000 pounds. Anyway, we're just about to um, run through here and I actually think I have to take a different line, but the trailer over here. But we'll get out, we'll get on the rustic ring and I'll let you know how it's going once we leave. Well, I'm gonna run the suspension in the medium height setting. I can hear the compressor just kicking in there. Um, we also get a bunch of cool suspension data for those of you who don't know in Model S and X. It's really fun to watch this all work. I'm running it in the automatic damper setting, which should uh, learn about the weight on the vehicle and adjust accordingly. Uh, when I'm towing, that's what I found actually was a good compromise. When I'm driving just myself, sometimes I run comfort. The other things I wanna mention is I'm gonna run medium suspension here. We're gonna run plaid mode, may as well, comfort steering. And uh, we are not gonna do apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. A nice thing with Tesla is it uh, will just regen less when you lift off the accelerator pedal. I will know there's a limitation and I can hit the brakes to compensate. And there's also a trailer mode here, which, um, actually uh, disables or restricts certain functions, including some driver assistance and also smart air adjustment, uh, smart air suspension uh, height adjustments and do not enable trailer mode when not towing. Uh, interestingly, there are there's no built-in trailer brake controller in this, which I guess 5,000 pounds maximum, that seems okay. Um, but the other thing is this locks you out of autopilot and limits you to adaptive cruise control. I have found, and I would never recommend someone to do this, but I have tried it and just, just to test, you, while you're towing, you can just turn off trailer mode and then you get autopilot. 
<laughs> you could just autopilot with your trailer. So I think that's an interesting one, but it does disable trailer sway control and some other things. And, you know, especially with 5,000 pounds maxing this out, I certainly would not do that. But if it's just a little open trailer, mm, yeah, definitely not recommending it, but just letting you know that you can if you wanted to. Again, we're charged, well, it says 99% now, but it just dipped down from 100. We are fully charged and we are going to reset our trip. So let's come here. We'll rename this instead of range test, the rustic, whoop, rustic space ring. There we go. Save. So let's head out on the rustic ring challenge. Start the time lapse here. Let me make sure that it's good to go. Time lapse. Boom. Let's go. And uh, we're heading out. Jordan's riding in the lightning to get our some footage. The sun is bright. We'll use the sunshade. We're going to go see how this thing tows over the 85 mile, pretty treacherous loop. Climate control on at 70. Suspension in medium, new model X and S, by the way, always go to low suspension. I don't know about S actually. I think my S goes to low, but new model X always goes to low suspension. So let's find a gap in traffic and head out. Well guys, we're just pulling out onto the roadway now. Things are going well in the Model X. We have no regen, so I'm using friction brakes to slow us down. That's very normal for a 100% state of charge. Just oh, literally no regen at all. And that's very typical for vehicles that we test here. Some vehicles compensate by adding brakes. The Model X certainly can do that here. That's this setting right here, apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. I just love how it gives you the option. And personally, I like to feel the limitations. So we're heading out. We have all the power in the world. You barely can tell that there's a trailer behind us from a power standpoint. But one thing I will say is the Model X, where however it's mounted into the chassis or however it's really set up, you do feel the trailer motions a lot more than other vehicles. I mean, certainly I just had this exact load on the back of a Hummer EV, which I don't know if this will go up before or after that one, but um, you could not even hear a trailer, feel a trailer, nothing. This one, you get some body motions and porpoising, and I've just noticed that yeah, the Model X doesn't really feel like it's a vehicle built to do max towing. So yeah, I'm really curious to see how it does on this test. I think the drivetrain is going to be crazy, but I also think the dirt road portion is going to be pushing this thing to the max. What do you think, Alyssa? Probably not, not too confident about this car. You think maybe we'll get stuck? <laughs> Probably. Oh, it'll be interesting to see a uh, really good one pedal tuning, blending us all the way to zero and putting the brakes on auto hold right there for us. Let's get out of the city. We'll do our first uh, consumption check-in uh, before we turn on to Wrist Canyon. That's when we'll then set the uh, navigation to the top of Wrist to see how well it can um, calculate our consumption on the way up. Should be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to this. turning on to Wrist Canyon, and this is where we do two things. We look at our initial consumption at 669 watt hour per mile. I think that's the most efficient we've seen so far in this test, but also the 5,000 pound test is a lot less strenuous than of course the 10,000 pound test. Weight and arrow always play an impact into to towing, of course, so does rolling resistance of the trailer and some other things, but um, arrow usually plays a bigger factor then wait. So if you're doing a lot of highway driving, you really want to find a slippery trailer that might be heavier than a light trailer that's a brick. That would be inefficient. What we're going to do is we're going to come here and basically look at the hill climb portion of Wrist Canyon. We're going to select this as the end point as to where we want to end. It's in about nine miles as the crow flies, but you'll see this will go up to 12 miles once we hit start. And we're going to look at, uh, there we are, 11 miles our estimated arrival at the top of the hill. Now, it is indicating 73% state of charge at the top. Right now we have 95%, and so it knows we're gonna burn a lot of juice over the next 11 miles. And Tesla always has, at least with some of the newer software updates, bang on predictions I've seen, at least from towing with the Cybertruck, uh, in these tests right here, in this type of route planning with the trailer. We've shown it six miles of this load. Hopefully it's learned what the heck we're towing and let's see how accurate it is by the time we get up there. It's predicting 73%. Really curious to see what we get to the top with. We're 
do a little bit of acceleration. Now, this is where we get to see how powerful electric cars are while towing, and we already know this is gonna be crazy. So I, I don't wanna break my trailer with a thousand horsepower, but I'm just gonna roll into it. Full power. Oh my gosh. Just spinning the front tires. You can see power limitations coming in because of traction. It just roasts the tires, it's crazy. And I said earlier when I <laughs> did this with the Hummer that that's the fastest the smart car's ever accelerated, but I think now this is the fastest the smart car's ever accelerated. No question, we all know the Plaids have all the power in the world. This has a lot of freaking power. So let's get on up to the top of the hill. on the hill climb and it is no problem keeping this thing at the correct speed just using a tiny bit of the power to haul up honestly uh, after doing a couple of those 10,000 pound towing tests Alyssa it feels like we have a feather on the back of this thing yeah it just honestly just feels like we're I don't know we have nothing on there yeah just driving normally <laughs> Yeah, it's I guess too tempting to yeah. just go fast. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I'm like flying through corners and I'm like, oh, I got a trailer back there. Got to be mindful. <laughs> uh, but we're at 1100 watt hour per mile right now. You, you know, the energy graph certainly shows it, but the car does a good job of hiding the weight. And yeah, I mean, it's just got so much available power on tap. The car has not complained at all. It feels so stable and uh, actually very impressed with how the Model X is doing here in this test so far very understressed. I would have loved to see Model X tow somewhere in that 7,000, 7,500 pound category to compete with R1S and a few other uh, offerings that I know are coming soon that can tow more as an SUV. And I think we're starting to see more people tow with SUVs that are electric. And that brings up a point that I wanted to mention, which is we know Teslas have great thermal management systems. We know that this vehicle is going to perform reasonably well on this test. I'm really curious to see if it has a regen limit like the Cybertruck did down the first slope. But the charge port location in the back taillight is fine for daily driving. I love backing into a supercharger, but certainly makes it a pain in the butt when towing long distances. You have to often unhook your trailer at charging stations because very few of them are fit for towing with pull through stalls. And I, I'd love to see more improvement in that, but even some of the new stations in Colorado that are popping up just do not have pull throughs. I just looked at the site plans for our new Fort Collins supercharger, no pull through sites. To me, it's just crazy. They should not install any new charging stations that don't support trailers. And, um, you know, I know that makes site locations difficult, uh, more difficult to find, but towing with an EV, if everyone's gonna be driving electric, there's a lot of people that tow around here in Colorado, and it's so important to have pull-through stations with a rear charge port. Now, if you're a Rivian R1S, uh, has a huge advantage over the Cybertruck. Not only can it tow more, but it has that front charging port and it can use superchargers. So that seems like almost a better tow rig just from a maneuverability point. But I just had to bring that home. I'm gonna harp on the charge port location thing for towing. Um, I'm someone who tows a lot with electric vehicles. Having a rear charge port sucks when towing. There's just no way around it. Our infrastructure today is not built for supporting vehicles with a rear charge port and pull-throughs, unless you drive in Norway. In Norway, Alyssa, we saw so many stations with pull-throughs. Yeah, they're kind of a market around gas stations. So there's a lot that honestly have just replaced pumps. And so you just pull through like you normally do. Yep, absolutely. Well, anyway, it is what it is. We're gonna continue on the trek cruising. So um, let's continue with the hill climb. Beautiful views up here in Colorado. It's getting cold out, 45 degrees, but the battery's toasty. We're down to 80% state of charge now. Again, 1152 watt hour per mile. That's like, what, 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour, roughly? Pretty interesting. Let's keep going. We 
are reaching the hill climb portion of this challenge. This is the first of two major switchback hill climbs that are low speed, high power, really putting the stress into the system. We're up to 1200 watt hour per mile. I'm sure we'll be higher than that by the time we reach our crest. And the cool thing is right after the top of this hill climb, which is no joke, we are going to essentially uh, have straight regen on the downhill. So here's Jordan getting a cool shot on the inside right here. We're gonna give him some acceleration just for some cool, like watch how the plaid pulls out of here, just foot down. Whoa. <laughs> crazy how this thing just boogies out of there. That's awesome. So crazy quick. And we are going to, oh, it's slippery. <laughs> We're spinning tires, traction control's on. <laughs> Look at the views off in the distance there, wow. So, yeah, the Tesla said we'd get up here with 73%, right, Alyssa? Yeah. And guess what? I think it's gonna be dead accurate. It's at 74 right now. Slippery on this stuff. You're right, the dirt road might be a challenge for this thing. Mm -hmm. Could be interesting, that's for sure. 74% at the crest. <laughs> Same as Cybertruck, we did one better than it suggested. So now we've crested the hill, we have a 12% grade for miles, and I'm going full regen right now. We're gonna try and hold it at 30 miles an hour. Now in the Cybertruck, we're at 73% right now, like I mentioned, actually just dipped from 74 to 73. Um, the Cybertruck lost regen very quickly and it got regen dots. And a lot of that is not necessarily temperature, but cell characterization issues. It could also be inverter temperature. It's hard to know where the limit is, but I'm going to go here and we've got it just sitting on full regen and we'll see how well it can do the downhill. We're already up to 74% state of charge. Again, our consumption is going to decrease. We're at 1,234 watt hour per mile. One, two, three, four, love that. And, uh, yeah, we're just trying to try and hold it under 35 miles an hour. So it's holding us steady at 37, but it's not decreasing any speed. But I'm also not feeling a regen limit, which the Cybertruck had a regen limit almost instantly. So I'm feeling like this is actually almost doing better. But keep in mind, we have half the load of the Cybertruck going down this hill. It's still maxed out for the Model X, though. So it's still holding us steady, 36, 37. We did increase one mile an hour there but I'm just off all controls down to 36, down to 35, so it's still decelerating. No big regen limit at this moment. 34 now, doing a great job of managing speed and deceleration. Just gonna back off the regen a little bit, build up a little bit more speed, back to full regen. Wow, this thing is so consistent, so solid, even at relatively high state of charge, 75%. We'll have another uh, decline that we're going to test at lower state of charge as we go back into town. But this is no joke. Model X has the battery systems figured out. I would say way more than Cybertruck. This can handle it. It's taking the abuse. It's taking the full regen on the way down and it's not complaining at all. And one thing we'll do as we always do is we'll get it up to about 40 or 45 miles an hour now on the straightaway and we're going to have it do a max regen test, just have to get out of the way for this guy parked on the side. There's 45 miles an hour, full regen coming down, and we're gonna see how well it brings us to a stop. There's 20 miles an hour, this is under full load, under still some deceleration, and we're gonna come to low speed here. Jordan's gonna go for a pass while we're doing this, very nice. Okay, and we come to auto hold. Fantastic one pedal driving. I would like to see more regen as a whole. Uh, Cybertruck has a really great feature that compensates with extra regen for a heavier load so that you get a consistent deceleration performance. But I understand the Model X is not totally built for towing. And if I wanted more regen, I could put it in track mode, which would increase cooling and do some other things. But right now I'm not finding the limitation with the Model X and usually with electric cars, we find the limit right there on that increase of elevation, 12 miles of straight climb with two or three miles of straight downhill. That's usually where we find the limits. Anyway, we're now on Stove Prairie Road. We're gonna meander our way over to Poudre Canyon. We're at 75% state of charge and our consumption check-in right there was 1,079 watt hour per mile.
So very good. You can see the screen here, just like Cybertruck, still has no idea that we're towing anything and it freaks out thinking something's tailgating you. You would think when you put it in trailer mode, it should know there's a trailer behind you, but it doesn't. heading down into the Poudre Canyon and we have regen quite a bit. Our efficiency is pretty good at 769 watt hour per mile, which is pretty impressive actually, uh, considering the fact that um, normally we don't recapture that much. Very rarely did I have to touch the friction brakes, almost none at all. By the, by the time we got here in the Cybertruck, the brakes were smelling and here, not so much. So uh, 764 watt hour per mile, 78% state of charge at this point. So there he goes to get some more shots. He was ripping that lightning through there. Coming out of the Humber EV, this feels light as a feather, almost feels like a race car. And maybe that's not a great basis of comparison, but I've never, like, I, I just feel like I don't have a trailer behind me. It must be loaded just perfectly. And it's got all the power in the world. The regen's not giving me any issues. The steering is light, but direct right where I need it to be. And honestly, this is making a great tow vehicle and certainly uh, very, very thrilled with towing here. I think this would be a great vehicle to tow with if you, again, you have a small travel trailer or something like that. It uh, definitely does what it needs to do here in the mountains. I'm impressed. Really curious to see how it does when we get up on the highway towards the end of this test. And of course, the hill climb, which we are approaching very quickly. But I have to give it a lot of praise right now. Vehicle feels good. I definitely feel a little chassis flex or a little chassis movement when the trailer hits a bump. It definitely feels like, okay, it's not as stiff or as really strong as some of the big boy trucks. But again, with a max tow rating of 5,000 pounds, it's really not that much weight on this thing. And so it's handling it just fine. We have arrived at the road 69 and we're about to do the 69 hill climb, which is great. It says park assist is degraded. Distance, distance estimates may be inaccurate. I'm gonna tap to park here see the electronic parking brake here is a little bit not ideal this is where i'd like to have a physical parking pall i'm actually a fan of removing them for maybe this class of vehicle Five thousand pounds parking brake should be fine but if you have to tow a lot of weight then okay i like a physical parking pall these doors always fighting these damn doors can't stand them can't stand the doors i just want it to open instantly and it's like are you sure and then you have to wait and then it opens. I'm just gonna make sure the smart car strapped down and then we can go. Well, the smart has not budged an inch. We are all good. Let's turn this thing on. Let's check our settings. So we wanna make sure we're still in tow mode, trailer mode, yes. We're gonna go suspension medium, yes. And worst case, if we need it, we have slip start, which it might get a little bit muddy up here. Tap to drive, we're good to go. Let's rock and roll. This, I'm already feeling a lot more shaking <laughs> than I did in the Hummer. Yeah, this is real lumpy. Yeah, but I think I can also back the suspension down to, oh, it's gone to low. We wanna go medium and we wanna go comfort. So let's go comfort damping. Oh, much better, just raising it up, riding in comfort. They run in low probably for efficiency, but at least when towing, auto high beams on. It's actually snowing a little bit up here, more raining. It's 43 degrees, but it's some mixed Seat. sleeting. Yep, Alyssa's not gonna get the bottom hill and climb shot in this episode because she doesn't wanna become bear food. And we really are out in bear country, so. 
But Jordan could be barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan's got his truck. We yeah. usually just leave you without a vehicle. Yeah, no, I'm just stranded. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go run this thing. It's a little bit darker than I would have liked. We're about 15 or 20 minutes later than I would have hoped to be. But I have to say, this thing boogies, though. We probably drove a little bit quicker than in other tests to get up here. Not by much. Maybe 5% quicker or something. And it just did not care at all. And it's doing great, honestly, on the dirt. I have to say, this is better than I expected. Once you put the suspension in medium, this thing can handle it pretty well. Here over the washboards, you feel where the doors are mounted in the roof. It's a little bit soft-ish. Let's just turn off the high beams for the shot. And here we go, climb it up. See you guys on the 69 hill climb. Oh, by the way, what was our state of charge checking at the bottom of the hill? I think 64%, 63%? Yeah. Something like that. I forgot to do that. Our efficiency check-in, whoop, whoop, whoop. 821 one hour per mile. Let's call it 818 down there because it's going up big time cruising. Yeah, definitely over some of these washboards you can tell, okay. We are not on <laughs> all-terrain tires. We're running pretty high tire pressures, but that's the nature of the game with EVs. It's doing fine. Powertrain doesn't care. Tri-motor system here, ripping along. Three permanent magnet motors in this one, I should mention, which should really help with a lot of low-down torque climb in the big hill climb here. So, Alyssa, I'm not going to drop you as normal. We're just going to keep going. We're going to do, if, I don't know if the viewers can even see how crazy steep this is, but it's hard to convey on camera just how crazy this climb really is. So let's get up this way. Hopefully we have the traction to pull us up. A little bit of wheel spin. You can feel it. Oh, you can feel the back end getting pulled down, <laughs> but I'm hard throttle. We have some washboard here. Yep, a little shaky, but damn, it's doing it without complaint dab a region just to scrub some speed coming in through the second portion of the hill climb here some lower washboard and it's doing it just fine is there a car up here or was that jordan moving around i'm not sure so let's see yep i think it's just jordan's lightning right there awesome we have made it to the crest gotta get the photo and then we can continue with the test oh so that is where the trailer hitch into the vehicle just always feels a little bit, maybe not perfect. We'll come to a stop, put the vehicle in park, and we are at 889 watt hour per mile, 57% at the top of the hill climb. Let's get the photo. Okay, we've got the photo into drive, and we gotta pull ourselves out of this little hole that we're in, but no issues not even wheel spin. <laughs> it's so funny, when you put a 10,000 pound trailer on a vehicle, this hill climb feels like a real challenge. It is snowing right now, actually, but it is above freezing 39. Um, and then you do 5,000 pounds and it's like, yeah, nothing, nothing. So yeah, really interesting. Learning a lot. The weight makes a huge difference while towing, but Model X is handling this swimmingly. now making it to substation which marks the end of the Larimer County 69 hill climb and a really fun road here really fun enjoyable test of course coming in no regen limits at all just slowing us down nicely uh, as we come into I believe 68 C so there's the substation and we're merging on we have a few miles of meandering dirt roads some elevation change until we get back to the pavement on the road that leads to Red Feather Lakes. And then it's just straight downhill until we get to the highway portion of this test. We are at 893 watt hour per mile at 56%, but of course that will change as we continue. Well, viewers, we have reached the end of the dirt road and we are at 54% state of charge as we make our way onto 74E. We uh, have traveled 50 miles, of course, and we are at 810 watt hour per mile. So definitely noticing a little bit of that smaller battery pack. I do hear cooling fans running actually on the outside. Of course, Tesla uses a very sophisticated heating and cooling system with a heat pump and an octo valve with heat scavenging and multiple different cooling loops for different areas. But um, in my opinion, almost no one does thermal management better than Tesla. I mean, this thing is just so good at that kind of stuff. So anyway, now we start the long descent down from the top of the hill all the way down to basically the elevation where we started. So we'll have long duration, constant regen. 
We still haven't run it into any regen limits or anything like that, but certainly this is going to test it. Uh, a couple requests while we're here, just uh, things that I'd like Model X to improve on in terms of braking is, of course, more regen. I'd like to see them compensate for the trailer load like the Cybertruck. I feel like so if they wrote that piece of code for Cybertruck, maybe they can adapt it to Model X pretty easily because the regen certainly does feel pretty weak. Uh, until we go into like a track mode, which Model X doesn't have track mode, but until we go into, um, I guess that's the maximum the Model X can do, but it does feel pretty weak compared to the Cybertruck. And the next thing is the braking performance of the Model X itself is just fairly weak. This is the newest version of, pl of the Plaid with the red brake calipers and sort of the, the downsized pads. And you hit the brake pedal and it just feels like nothing in there really you gotta just harp on the brakes to get the thing to stop and it's a very tesla feeling brake pedal which just is not good i just really wish tesla would focus on making a much more responsive and stiffer and strong braking package uh, that's also rolling resistant uh you know compliant i feel like that should be not hard for it they're, they're amazing in the powertrain but their braking tech sucks so I'd love to see much better braking performance. It would make me feel more confident towing a heavy load downhill if regen were to fail or just as a supplemental stopping power. Well guys, we have reached the bottom of the descent and we are at 52% state of charge. Let's take a look at our stats here. I'm expecting pretty good efficiency now. Wow, 66 miles in, 628 watt hour per mile. That is very efficient for this test. Probably the most efficient we've seen in this test so far. So let's get it up to 65 miles an hour. This is sort of the highway portion, of course. All the acceleration in the world if we need it, which is great to have on tap. We're gonna get it set somewhere in that 60 to 65 range. And we're just cruising on adaptive cruise control. Now, I can go into the autopilot settings here and adjust my cruising follow distance. There is no separate distance for towing, but that's okay. And the one thing I wanted to at least bring to your attention, I mentioned that I don't recommend doing this, but I can come here and turn trailer mode off. And then even though I've got full load on the back of this Model X, put on autopilot. And here I am cruising on autopilot with a trailer. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug, if it's an issue, I wonder what happens when I turn trailer mode on while autopiloting. <laughs> it says take over immediately. And there we go. I've taken over immediately. Auto steer aborted for system error. <laughs> so it's got a little bug in there. That's pretty funny. But I wonder if that's intentional. It's definitely been like this for months and months, at least since the beginning of 2024. Um, and maybe even before that, I don't know, but that's when I first noticed this. I didn't think you used to be able to do this, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be an issue here. So anyway, cruising on the highway with a trailer, the Model X, really a great highway cruiser in general. There's plenty of room, great sound system, very comfortable, and adding a trailer on the back really doesn't affect any of that. The car tows uh, very stably. It has trailer sway control, which is nice. It's got autopilot if you dare to use it. Again, we don't recommend it, but at least it allows for lane centering while cruising with a trailer. The one thing I would be very mindful of when using adaptive cruise control or autopilot when towing is the phantom braking situation. We have driven many times for many miles in Teslas, and although I will agree it's getting better with much of your on the audience, phantom braking is getting better. It still can happen and phantom braking with a trailer could be dangerous. It's not just slowing down, but it can upset the balance of your load. It really can throw things off. So always cover the accelerator pedal when towing uh, in a Tesla is my recommendation. Anyway, we're gonna cruise into town. We got some a very last hint of light in the sky, although that could just be light pollution from Fort Collins. But we're gonna cruise in. Let's not blind this truck. Auto high beam, still not perfect either. A lot of the tech in this car, I think, it just needs like someone to come through and just drive one for the weekend, one of these software engineers, and do what Tesla owners do, and then just polish up the last 5% would be my request. We are here rolling into town and just a really nice cruiser on the highway. Some nice things I'm noticing that are actually making towing very nice with the Model X are the turn signals. Uh, now, I don't really like that they're on the wheel and I don't have stocks. I own a Model S with this system and I don't think it's that great. But when I put the signal on, you can see I get a camera view, both right and left side 
of what's going on and you can see I really can see quite far past the trailer it's a really good uh, solution actually I'm a pretty big fan of the camera system here and they also are placed in a way where the uh, you know sort of the aerodynamic simulation they use to figure out the exact placement for the camera means they very rarely get dirty the rear camera gets dirty but the side ones really don't it's very good so um, our efficiency feels like we used quite a bit of battery but it's also again a smaller battery than the uh, other vehicles in this test if I take a look at our efficiency so far we are at 578 watt hour per mile that's almost two miles per kilowatt hour that's pretty incredible on this loop considering it's cold we climbed huge elevation we regen huge elevation and part of the efficiency being so good is just how well the Model X allowed regen to happen the entire way again a very rarely did I have to use friction brakes and when I did I wish they were a little bit better uh, but just very very impressed with overall the package of Model X and uh, even towing maximum weight feels very very nice so we're pulling into the office now that is the end of the rustic ring um, we've learned that the 5,000 pound tow tests are not nearly as hard as the 10,000 pound tests but it does give us a really good impression of towing with vehicles and just using them with lighter loads and man the Model X is certainly a great road tripper with a trailer and just using it for around town if you have small loads that you're hauling so call me pretty thrilled with it that was a really good test Alyssa your thoughts after doing this for 87 miles 50 kilowatt hours 574 watt hour per mile ending at 43 percent what what do you think um I think it did really well the only thing I will mention is uh that I did get uh, kind of nauseous on the dirt roads with the washboard so the riding comfort wasn't as uh great in my opinion, compared well, yeah. to doing all the other cars. We, um, we've been doing trucks that are meant for like off-road adventure and have these huge airbag systems. And this one's an SUV meant for on-road driving. Yeah, but if you're still bringing this up to your cabin and there's washboards, then you're going to, it still matters. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I'm not saying I disagree with you. I, I agree. It def you definitely feel the bumps, but for this class of vehicle, it's pretty good. It's no R1S, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that that's in this class of vehicle, so. Would you accept that in an R1S? This ride quality in an R1S? Yeah. No. Exactly. But for an, a Model X, which is primarily positioned to be an on-road vehicle, I think it's fine. Okay, what about my e-tron? Your e-tron would ride way better than this. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> point but proven. on the road, this is pretty comfortable. Yeah. It just doesn't love the big washboarding stuff. So there we go. We've ended the rustic ring, and... Uh, you didn't share your impressions on how it towed. You shared about the dirt roads, but how did it tow? Yeah, I said it towed fine. It does great. Felt nothing. Yeah. Nice. Good. Well, I agree. It was extremely efficient. They really, uh, you know, Tesla captures all that energy back. This is by far the most efficient I've seen and maybe will ever see in the rustic ring. This was really great. So props to Tesla on building a very efficient driveline system here in the Model X. It feels robust. It feels solid. It feels well sorted. And uh, that is the end of the rustic ring from our side. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>